Xin chào YouTube, welcome to Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City. I'm here on Bolivian Street, and for the past 48 hours, I've been here capturing everything. So sit back, relax, grab a Saigon, and enjoy the video. If you're in Saigon or you're planning to come to Saigon, you need to add Boy Vien Street as one of your places you need to visit. Here's why. <laughs> no, I have money. I know how much these cost. I'll give you 20. 20. I have many. Look, this. I give 10. 5. Okay, I just made it to my Airbnb. It's right here behind me. Uh, I'll give you a tour a little bit later. First, I'm trying to uh, get the lay of the land here. Uh, I'm staying uh, in Maui. That branches off of the uh, Bui Vien, uh, which is known as the uh, walking street. I'm not sure which way to go. Let's start out front first. Here we go. We'll find the, the massage ladies don't want to be seen. So let's go find some beer. Oh man, I can tell this place is gonna be bonkers at night. Beer! 20,000, one bill. 20,000. Thai go to Saigon, 20,000. Saigon, 20. 20. Okay. I'll take a Saigon, please. So, welcome to SG Food and Beer. This place quickly became my go to spot, not only because it's really close, but it's right in the middle of Boi Vien Street, right in the middle of the action. Hi. How are you? Good, where are you from? Italy. Italy, oh, okay. When I'm traveling alone, I like to find these smaller establishments because the ambiance is usually a little bit more intimate and it's a lot easier to meet people, whether they're travelers themselves or people that actually live in the area. One of the workers here apparently speaks English and she learned it by watching Disney. So this is Jung, she's one of the workers here, and yes, she learned how to speak English by watching Disney. Or at least that's what she told me. And initially, I wasn't really planning on staying here too long, I was just gonna have a couple beers and go find some street food, but I really like the people working here, and I met a couple interesting people a little bit earlier, so I figured might as well stay, order some food, and hang out a little bit longer. Yeah, they're pretty good. I just needed some protein in my belly, and these were cheap, so... Okay, I'm back in my room and uh, I was doing a little research and apparently this area is known as the red light district. I had no idea, but that's okay. That'll make for an interesting adventure, but welcome to my room. I'll give you a quick room tour here. I have a bed, there's a fridge, I have a closet, and then a bathroom. It's not the cleanest, it has a little odor about it, but I've been in worse rooms than this, so it's okay. So I paid about $25 per night for this Airbnb, which is kind of expensive for Southeast Asia, but this is located right in the middle of District 1, which is central to pretty much all of the major attractions in Saigon. So it's just a really convenient location. All right, we're back on Bowie Street. Let's go down this way. Now about... 6.35 and I'm not like super hungry yet but I can definitely eat again so let's go find something else to eat. During the day, Boy Vien Street looks like pretty much any other street in Saigon. 
but when the sun sets, this place completely transforms. It becomes one of the most popular attractions in all of Ho Chi Minh. And it's not just popular with expats and tourists. Locals love coming here as well. Oh my god, this is freaking nuts, bro. It's crazy out here. Oh my gosh, it's way different than Pub Street. Uh, just, uh, I just feel like there's so much, um, there's so much energy here. It's crazy. I don't know what it is about this smoke rising off of that grill, it just attracts me to it. Alongside gum tam, which is broken rice and pho, banh mi is one of the most popular street foods in Saigon. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Ban mi, can't go wrong with ban mi. All over Saigon, on pretty much every single block, you'll find a vendor selling banh mi. And they all have their own twist on what they put inside of the banh mi. But the one thing that ties them all together, the one thing that makes them special is the bread. The Vietnamese have perfected the art of bread making. Whatever he marinates that pork with is so good. And that bread is just perfect. Nice and flaky, soft on the inside, a little crispy on the outside. Where are you from? Good. Good, yeah. That was probably the best bun I've had so far. It was really good. A lot of the restaurants here on Boy Vien are catered to the Western palate, but you can actually find some really good authentic Vietnamese cuisine here as well. Just look for the girls out front wearing bright traditional garb. This one here is called Lua Dai Viet, and it has five stars on Google, so it must be pretty decent. And here's another Dai Viet restaurant. This one here is called Nung Tan, or the rice restaurant, and it's actually located in the middle of Boi Vien, right across from SG Food and Beer. But this one also has really high marks, uh, 4.8 on Google. And again, you can find them easily by the brightly lit exterior and the girls that are dressed up in traditional garb. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to bring something here? Maybe I will walk and come back. What do you take a wagon? Because maybe you're walking around here with me, Do you want to I don't go back? take a wagon. <laughs> Up until about 9 p.m., the streets were busy, but not very crowded. And as you can see, most of the bars are still kind of empty. But right around 10 p.m., that's when things really start to ramp up. All right, looks like the Go Go Girls are out. They don't seem very enthusiastic. I like how they have the, the seating right out front there. So you can just people watch. It's really cool. I'm so glad it's not raining. It has been one of those weeks where it's just non-stop rain and finally for the past couple of days it stopped raining. Whoa! Wow. It's good music. After wandering up and down Boi Vien for a little bit, taking in all the sights and sounds, I decided that I would head back to my favorite spot. I came back to the Singapore food and beer, at least I was at first. I'll be a tiger. Just people watching. It's crazy out here. And that's what I did for the rest of the evening. I sat here drinking beers and observing all the debauchery happening around me. And aside from the extremely loud music, it was pretty enjoyable. It's so freaking loud! I can't even think! After about the third or fourth beer, I'm thinking about going back to my room and calling it a night. But all of a sudden, Jung joins in, and I'm like, you know what? I might as well have some more. And next thing I know, the other girls at work here are toasting me as well. Oh. And for those of you that don't know the Vietnamese toast, it's Mut Hai Ba Yo, which basically means one, two, three, bottoms up. Yo! This is a chicken gizzard. Chicken gizzard. Yeah. 
And I know what you guys are thinking. They're just being friendly to me because they want me to spend more money here. And I did spend more money here, but I really felt like they were having a good time with me as well. I like how the workers can drink on the job. It's part of their job, I guess. And the entire time, they never stopped providing me excellent service. Anytime my beer was half empty, they would fill it for me. If they saw I was low on ice, they'd bring me more. They were just very attentive to me, and I know that's part of their job, but they're good at it. So I'm sitting here minding my own business watching this monkey when all of a sudden some random dude comes up and takes my shoe off. That guy, that guy over there just stole my shoe and started cleaning it. What the hell's going on here? No. I didn't know this at the time, but this is basically a scam that these shoe cleaners do. These guys will come up to you, ask if you need your shoe cleaned, and before you can say no, they just rip your shoe right off and start cleaning them anyway. Next thing you know, you're paying five bucks for a shoe cleaning that you never asked for. Thank goodness Jung was there. She yelled at the guys, told them to go away, and I ended up not having to pay. And throughout the night, Jung kept bringing me a bunch of different snacks and nosh on while I was drinking, and I didn't have to pay for any of it. Needless to say, Jung was a very gracious host and not just her, everybody here, everybody that worked here was awesome. So if you find yourself on Boy Vien Street anytime soon, make sure you check out SG Food and Beer. So these are quail eggs? So I've had balut or baby eggs many times before but this was the first time I've ever had the quail version and I gotta say it was really good. Tasted exactly like balut only smaller. Towards the end of the night, I met up with this guy from Couchsurfer. Now, if you don't know what Couchsurfer is, it's basically an app or service where you can actually stay with locals. But they also have a function within the app where you can start a hangout and you set your hangout description to whatever. I set mine to get some drinks out here in Boy Vien and uh, met up with these two fellas. It's a really neat feature that I just discovered before I got to Vietnam but I wanted to go into one of these clubs and I didn't want to go by myself so perfect timing to meet up with these guys. And man what a great way to end the night hanging out with two strangers that I just met and I know nothing about them other than one is from Japan the other was from India but this is really one of the best experiences I've ever had during my travels and I highly highly recommend to all of you out there that are thinking of coming to Vietnam, you gotta visit Boy Vien Street.
man, what a night. I don't think I went to bed until like, it was close to 3 a.m. But I'm a little groggy this morning. I need something to wake me up, maybe some pho.